Hey, man, I used to have a psychedelic brush. And the comb, too, came as a set. But I lost it, man, in the 70s. You know how it is. We'll start off this effect by creating a brush. So I'll go to File, New. I'm going to make this 800 by 800 at 72 DPI. That should be good. We'll hit Create. And we'll go to our ellipse tool somewhere around the center of the screen there. We'll start drawing. Shift and control to constrain. And I think that's good. I want to have no, um, no stroke, just a fill. And to see things more clearly, I'll go to document and turn on transparent background. And now with it still selected, I will go to my gradient tool and I wanna find the center and then just kind of offset a little bit and click and drag that out somewhere around there. This will be better as a radial gradient. And if I click on this button here, I can get to my colors. Let's grab this one. And I want to make some colors that stand out and have a, a bit of contrast to them. So let's go with um, that. And and the key for this effect is to get a variation of color around the edge. So this edge is pretty much all pink and then it's starting to become purple here. So I want a little extra. And to, to get that, I'll just add another stop in here and then bring this one out. And if I change this one, I could get a, sort of a, a reflected light effect. And uh, now I just probably wanna increase this Okay, so, and I could also move this to um, suit my needs. And now I got this yellow around this side, it's blending into pink, and then we got a purple and blue color around this edge. So nice variation around the edge, and um, I've got a, a three-dimensional shape here. So with that, I'm gonna make a bunch of copies with some slight variation. And I'll start with this first one and then fast forward through the repetitious parts. But I select this shape and alt drag. And now I scale it down. I want to hold down shift so I can strain it to a circle. And with it selected, I could click on the uh, gradient tool and I could see the gradient and I could um, make it larger if I want by clicking this end and dragging it. I could move it by clicking this end and moving it and uh, I could shift the colors around a little bit. So let's start off with this one. Let's see. Um, let's make this a yellow and let's make this uh, something that goes with that yellow, maybe orange and then this rim light. I'll go with um, You know what, I, I, th I think this will work best. And I might even want to add a little bit more detail in here just to make things a little bit more obvious. Maybe I'll make this one a, a lighter color. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a copy of this one, scale it down, move it, and shift this colors a little bit and um, do that a bunch more times and I'll fast forward through it. Okay, so I think this is good. I I could add more or less. It really doesn't matter. It just uh it's kind of a trial and error and, and you see how uh, the results are afterwards. And uh, so let's save this as, a, well, export it. So when we export it, we can create a PNG and um, I think everything is good. We'll hit export and we'll call this, uh, so I got a bunch of these already and uh, you can see it's kind of fun and addictive, but uh, let's create our brush number five. And now we need to create a new document. I'm going to press Control N to speed things up. And this will I'll go with 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI. And we need to select our brush. And I'll open up my brush palette. 
So what I want to do is I've got I've got a pr custom brush um, uh, bin or container or preset, whatever group or whatever you want to call it. But if you want to make one, just click up here and go to create new category. Okay, so it's called category. And it's going to name it brushes by default. And you can rename it to whatever you want. Custom, we have one already, so I'll call this uh, increment the number. And uh, all I need to do now is it's really easy to create brushes. You just go to new image brush. This will give you a brush with color and everything. And pick the, uh, the one that we made there. And now we're going to have, well, it's a really big brush. Let me scale it down and let me make sure that I'm on the right tool. So I got the brush. I need to select it. And uh, we could close the assistant. So this is the default brush. It's actually not too bad, just on its own. And the benefit of having the different colors is as I rotate around, you'll see this side is more pink and this angle, we get more blue. So when you do that, that gives you this three-dimensional effect, which is nice. So, but let's make it more interesting. So double click on the brush or click on this little icon here. Either way works. Actually, we got to make sure that it's selected first. I would just not use that because it's much easier just to double click here and not have to worry about selecting the brush. So we want, we want spacing to be very low. So I'm going to turn stabilizer on. I think this is the default, this rope mode, but this window mode seems to work a little bit better for me as far as getting this effect to smooth out. And I've got it set to the highest setting on the slider. And now you can see you've got a much better looking brush. And we can really see it if I increase the size. And we're getting a nice smooth shape. So this might be enough for you as it is. And uh, it's pretty interesting. But we could do more with it. I'm going to dial this number back here. Spacing at one gives you a smooth look, but it's going to make this preview really slow. And as I change these dynamic settings, my computer at least will be laggy. You might not have that issue, but I'm going to bring this back down to 1% spacing later. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. And uh, so I'm going to start with this rotation jitter. As I slide this, it's um, it's giving me a fast update, so that's good. And again, this is another possibly interesting brush just from changing that setting. But let's even go further. Clicking on this, I'm going to set this to cyclic. And you can see um, the results you're getting with that. And I also will, um, well, let's go, let's go here and change this. So we could see a little bit better of what's going on. Maybe a little smaller brush here. So you see it's rotating around in one direction and then back in the other in a cycle like the, the name would imply. And even one step further, if we go on its, in its little graph here and hit this curve here, this is an even more interesting look. I mean, at least I, I think so but let's see how, it, how it's going. So it's got a little bit of an ease in and an ease out before it does its cycle. And this is starting to look pretty interesting. So the, uh, the next thing we could do is add a, and if you like these as you go along, you could save a version with these settings and then you could change settings and make different versions. But I'm gonna keep going on here with the hue jitter. And then we just have a nightmare of random colors. So let's set this to, um, instead of cyclic, let's set this to direction and clear out our brush here. So as I go in one direction, I have that color, that hue. As I go in this one, this looks more like the default when I go left to right. So you'll see every angle gives you a different hue shift. And again, you could switch this on and you can see that the colors will change depending on which direction your brush is going. So you could go with that. If you really want the most control, 
I, and, and you have a drawing tablet, setting this to pressure is going to give you the most control, but you have a lot of, you have a lot of different things you can do uh, with uh, just the mouse that are still interesting. So here it's just going to, no matter what the angle is, it's going to keep changing the colors. And um, let's see, what else can we do? This, this luminosity jitter is also interesting. Let's clear that out. And let's set this to um, direction. So now, depending on the direction, if I go upwards or at an angle, horizontal, you could see it's either pushing it towards white or pushing it towards black. So from right to left, we get the basically the original colors. And as we go at different angles, you see we get different results. Uh, one of the problems with it, as it is set up here, at a certain point, you're going to go from horizontal to slightly downwards, and it's going to shift from white to black. So uh, what we can do to avoid that is click on our, our little um, graph here. And at a certain point, this is, this is going to be white, and this is going to be black. It might be the opposite. And then right in the middle, that's the original color. So you'll see if I bring these... And now you can see how this, the spacing is slowing me down at 1%, but uh, it's, still, it's still moving, so that's good. So you can see straight across the middle, I basically have the original colors. And as I bring this upward, it's only going from the original to white. As long as it doesn't go downwards, I'm good. And then as I draw this out, you get this effect here. So let me try this from this direction. And then as we go towards this angle, you, you'll see we're fading to white. And if I take this much further here down, like it's horizontal, if I go down, it's going to flip back. So if you keep that in mind, you could get some, some interesting effects by... Okay, so let's let's start maybe like this. And then as I change this angle, I can have it like it's fading into the background. So that's, that's an interesting effect. One last thing is we could do something similar with the, the size jitter. So as it does that fade to the background, we can have it get smaller. So I'll set this also to direction. And let's just quickly test it out. So I want the opposite of that. And I can do that by clicking this. I don't need this complicated one, so I'll go click this first one. And I'll reverse that by dragging this one up and dragging this one down. And let's give this a go and see what we get. So now we have an effect where it starts off faded out and small and it gets larger. And this is pretty interesting. You just gotta be careful like I did here, you wanna avoid that. So as I bring this back around, I don't wanna bring my brush past horizontal. And I could kind of keep building this effect up like that. I could also make my brush a lot smaller and get some different results that way and just kind of trace things around. Let's go even smaller. And at any time, if you get tired of these, you could just take the size jitter off. You could take the luminosity jitter off. And then you just get your, your stroke solid the whole time and it looks the most interesting to me when you kind of use varying brushes. Even a really small brush can look interesting. If I make a tiny brush and just kind of follow the pattern that I already had, let's put this out of the way a little bit. Just kind of follow the shapes, maybe come off it a little bit and then come back in here. And that is how you could create a really interesting uh, type of brush. And there's an 
just about an infinite amount of variations that you can create.